There were so many horrific moments for Joe Biden last night, it's hard to know where to begin. All I know is that the headlines are screaming out today after last night's CNN presidential debate over at the Drudge Report. They're sounding the, the panic alarm. Operation Replace Biden screams the Drudge Report. And Drudge doesn't like Trump. Dems scramble with 130 days to go. Debate catastrophe. That's Drudge. CNN's Van Jones was on the verge of tears last night. Says Biden should be replaced if he will let us. Look, we knew that Biden was in bad condition. We've been talking about it for months and months. I don't think anybody anticipated how bad he would actually be last night on that debate stage. There was this lame, pitiful attempt by the White House after the debate to suggest that he had a cold. A cold? My gosh. He was uh, in terrible, terrible shape. Maybe President Trump, who was splendid last night. He was restrained. He was disciplined. He was careful not to go overboard. He didn't take the bait. It was a perfect format, actually, for Trump, much to the chagrin of the angry left. They wanted Jake Tapper and Dana Bash to screech and interrupt and scream and embarrass Trump. And when they didn't do that, oh, my gosh, you should see the the blistering attacks against CNN right now. Uh, oh, they were horrible. The Daily Beast, they're a performer. Dana Bash and Jake Tapper were a total embarrassment. Was terrible, horrible. They actually let two men stand up there and talk. How dare they? The American people got to see both of these men side by side, uninterrupted. How could they be fair? You see, the left doesn't like fairness. They don't they don't want that. They want they want chaos and interruptions and screaming. There's a lot of people on the verge of tears right now. Perhaps Trump summed it up best of all in one of the incoherent responses that Joe Biden gave. Trump looked over at him, bewildered, and said this. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. I mean, it was bad. It was it was way worse. I had some Democrat friends who were texting me and calling me last night saying, yep, now it's a matter of who we find to replace him. He's finished. Politico screamed a headline right after the debate, Biden is toast. And he is. It's uh, it's over. Clara McCaskill has been one of the biggest Biden cheerleaders on the planet. And incidentally, I absolutely am blowing out my rule about no MSNBC or CNN clips today, because you got to hear CNN and MSNBC. This is when it's fun. This is when it's actually enjoyable. It won't make you mad at all. So Clara McCaskill, the former politician who's now um, an MSNBC talking head, said the following. Um, and listen, nobody is a bigger fan of Kamala Harris than I am. And, and, you know, and, and Gavin Newsom did a remarkable job tonight as a surrogate. And what he said, you know, it, what, it's not that I disagree with anything they're saying, but those two people are signaling to a whole lot of Americans that are paying attention, how come they're not running? Um, how come the Democratic Party doesn't have them at the top of the ticket instead of using them to shore up uh, what have become after tonight some pretty glaring weaknesses in our in our president. Uh oh, uh oh. Yep, they're in trouble and they know it. And now it's just a matter of who they're going to replace him with. Incidentally, I love the narrative that Trump spewed a bunch of lies. There were such whoppers that Joe Biden told. Let's start with Biden bizarrely claiming that the Border Patrol endorsed him. That that's that's. That's as crazy as him saying, I'm going to cure cancer tomorrow. He makes crap up. That are, that It's like the guy from Saturday Night Live. Remember the John Lovitz character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 invented, I invented ice cream. Yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. And Trump didn't take the bait because as soon as he said it, I thought, oh, my gosh, his head's going to explode. The Border Patrol didn't. In fact, they 
they posted on social media during the debate, we didn't endorse Donald or, uh, Joe Biden. We endorsed Donald Trump. How about the lie about Charlottesville? Snopes just debunked that the other day. It was all over the place where even Snopes, the left-leaning fact-checking site, said Trump never claimed that neo-Nazis and white supremacists were very fine people. Biden repeated that lie last night. You want to fact-check some lies? Okay, let's play that game. Fact-check Joe Biden all night long. But it's all moot. It's a moot point. Politico is right. Biden is toast. He's absolutely gone. It's finished. And at the end of the day, I'm worried. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic that Trump had such a great night. I'm delighted that he won the debate hands down. I love the misery, frankly, of these leftists who have been lying to us about Biden's condition all this time. But I am deeply worried about who they're going to come up with now because whoever they come up with has a better chance against Trump than Joe Biden. 800-655-MIKE. The Democrats are in a feeding frenzy right now. There's blood in the water. Let's get your reaction. Your debate performance critique coming up here in the Relief Factor Studios. 800-655-MIKE. 800-655-6453. The catastrophic debate performance of Joe Biden last night, it was a thousand times worse than anybody thought. I actually almost felt sorry for CNN's Van Jones, who clearly was on the verge of tears when he shared with the audience that it's time for Joe to go. I can walk you through how I'm supposed to see it and say it, but I just want to speak from my heart. Um, I love that guy. That's a good man. He loves his country. Uh, he's doing the best that he can, uh, but he had a test to meet tonight uh, to restore confidence uh, uh, of, of the country and of the base, and he failed to do that. And I think there's a lot of people who are going to want to see him consider um, taking a different course now. Uh, we're still far from our convention, and there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if he will allow us to do that. Um, but that was uh, not what we needed from Joe Biden, and it's personally painful for a lot of people. It's not just panic, it's pain of what we saw tonight. They can replace him if he will allow us to do so. That, of course, is the big question. Will Biden be willing to step down? Anthony is in Inman, South Carolina. Hi, Anthony. How are you? Hey, how you doing, boss? I'm um, good. So... I keep hearing everybody saying they're going to replace Joe Biden and and get rid of him, but there's there's a problem with that. There's Camilla Harris, yep. and the the logistics and alone and just trying to pass over her uh, is is so bifurcated. They can't. They can't do it. You're right. They can't kick her to the curb. Yeah. How are they going to exactly. explain? How are they going to explain to their already angry, agitated base? That we're gonna we're gonna bail on Kamala Harris, the, the 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 black vice president. They can't do that. Well, it's not only that; it's constitutional too. You can't. You have these people in place to take the spot of someone that should they twenty fifth amendment. Well, no, no, or... no, no, no. This is nothing's going to happen before the convention. You know, Biden's going to finish out his term. I have no doubt. I know people were talking about the twenty fifth amendment after last night. But, you know, he'll finish his term. He just won't be on the ticket to run for re-election. Now, there's one of two things with Kamala Harris, it seems to me. They either make her the nominee, which would be fantastic. Now, she's better than Biden, but not by much. They either make her the nominee or they keep her on the ticket as the perennial vice president for Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama. Or Pete Buttigieg. I don't know who they're going to come up with, but they're going to come up with somebody. 800-655-MIKE, one open line, Alan in Brooksville, Florida. Hi, hi, Alan. How's it going? Good, Mike. Good. Uh, Listen, I was really concerned about the debate last night. I was quietly hoping that Biden would at least stand up and do a reasonable job. Unfortunately, he didn't. Uh, Now I think Trump has big problems on his hands. Because if they go to the convention and they delegate them out and they get someone uh, new and shiny, whoever that may be, Michelle Obama, you right. mentioned him, you also, 
Perry also mentioned uh, the governor of California. Right. Then the Democrats will say, hey, look, it's all bright and shiny over here. We're not we don't have Biden's bad policies anymore. We don't right. have an open border. We don't have crime in the streets. We're going to change all these things. And you don't know want in there. The bad guy with orange hair. He's a bad guy. He's a misogynist. He hates Muslims. He hates everybody. So we sure. got to go with the new shiny thing over here. Everybody pay attention to the new shiny object. Right. And I think Americans that don't pay attention about the policies of the hard left Democrats, who they'll be putting in that place, are to get duped into voting for Democrats. So there's again. no question that there's no question that's going to be the challenge for Donald <laughs> Trump. That doesn't mean it's over because the conventional wisdom is it's too late. <laughs> They're, they're, he's got too much momentum, and no matter who they try to put up there, they're not going to be able to stop him. But more, but more importantly, to the caller before you, what about Kamala? What do they do with her? Oh, I think I think that Kamala would step aside for the her party. I think she would do it for the Democratic Party. If they went to her and they said, "Look, we'll give you some cushy job in the government. You'll be Secretary yep. of State. We'll, yep. You'll be maybe the Attorney General. Maybe, but uh, anybody who knows I, her says she's ambitious." As, as all get out, she is power hungry. She loves the power. She's not going to, I don't know that she goes gently into that good night, but I'll tell you what, the exchange she had with, with uh, Anderson Cooper last night was astounding. The left is enraged at CNN and Anderson Cooper. I mean, first of all, they're mad that CNN let the debate go off pretty fairly. And I, I owe everybody an apology where I thought they would be real biased and they were going to rip into him. They didn't. They rip into Trump. They didn't. They did a very fair job. They let both men speak, which, of course, to the left is malpractice because they want they want him. They want to be they want to scream at uh, at Trump and they want to uh, to drive him crazy. You got it. You got to hear one of the uh, questions. I can't find my Anderson Cooper cut. We got about a gazillion cuts today. I want. Play, play Anderson Cooper. Oh, how about this one? Let's play four. This is one of the questions that Anderson Cooper had in a disastrous post-debate interview with Kamala Harris. This is wild. Check this out. The person we These saw tonight, issues. the president we saw tonight issues. on that stage, is that how he is every day? The Joe Biden that I work with every day is someone who, as I have said, has performed in a way that has been about bringing people into the Oval Office, Republicans and Democrats, to compromise in a way that is extraordinary these days because it just doesn't happen, but Joe Biden can make it happen. The Joe Biden I see is someone who goes to our allies around the world and strengthens NATO to the point that there are two new members of NATO who year, just about four years ago, people said, is NATO even have a reason for existing? The Joe Biden I know is someone who is delivered 800,000 new manufacturing jobs and bringing manufacturing back to the United States, not shipping jobs out like Donald Trump did. So that's the Joe Biden I know. Now, that's only a part of the eight minutes, and that's how it went for the whole interview. Anderson Cooper was grilling her and, and really attacking Biden. And I'll say this, he didn't do that in a vacuum. That was greenlit from up above. They all want Biden gone. As Politico said, Joe Biden is toast. Biden went at Trump pretty bad, called him a loser and a sucker or whatever he called him. He repeated the lie that has been debunked that Trump called members of the military suckers and losers, those who fought and died, as if it's conceivable that Trump would say that men and women who died for their country are suckers and losers. Nobody believes that. It's been debunked thoroughly. It was one of the many lies that are continually told about Trump, just like he said all Mexicans are rapists, and just like he said he'd never accept the outcome of the election, all the crap that they lie about. But but this is how nasty Biden got at, what, at one point last night. This is as animated as you, you saw all evening. Whether it was Agent Orange or Burn Pits, they're all being covered now. And he opposed his group opposed that. We're also in a situation where we have great respect for veterans. My, spent, my son spent a year in Iraq, living one next to one of those burn pits, came back with stage four glioblastoma. I was recently in, in, in uh, France for D-Day, and I spoke to all about those heroes that died. I went to the World War II cemetery, World War I cemetery he refused to go to. 
he was standing with his four-star general, and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, he was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. That's so sad. That That's the only word. You can't even get mad at that. You can't even get angry at that. I mean, it, it, Biden re- also repeated the lie that Trump called white supremacists and neo-Nazis very fine people. He repeated that last night, too. It was just like officially debunked days ago at Snopes. And, of course, that's a little bit of a mystery. Why suddenly, after all these years, did Snopes decide to set the record straight? But set the record straight, they did. I want to get personal for a minute. Um, I I don't like to get into anybody else's marriage. I was married. Long-time listeners know I'm a widower. My wife died in June of 2008. I still miss her. Uh, think about her often. Uh, it's hard to lose your spouse. And I remember that when people would get mad at me and they would attack my wife, um, I, I got real upset about that. I've always, leave my family alone. You know, you want to criticize me or come after me, okay. But, you know, please don't, my wife didn't do anything to you. So I'm really leery of judging Dr. Jill Biden, the first lady. But I have to I have to point this out. It is remarkable to me how emphatically all in she is knowing the condition her husband is in. And look, I I guess if I took the high if I were to take the high road, I'd say, well, she thinks he's best for the country. But she has to know the condition he's in. Listen to the way she spoke to him last night. At a post-debate party, and I don't know what they're having a party about, uh, because they had to know what a catastrophic performance Biden put in. But listen to Jill Biden, the first lady. Oh, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the facts. And let me ask the crowd, what did Trump do? Oh, my gosh. And then she did a little video in the spin room after the debate that was posted everywhere. Here's what she said after the debate was over. You heard Joe's heart tonight on the debate stage. He wakes up every morning thinking about how he can make the lives of Americans better. He's the president we need, the president you deserve. Sign up at JoeBiden.com to help finish the job. I think he wakes up every morning glad that he woke up. I mean, I, I with all due respect, I, this poor guy is so infirm. There, They leaked video of him coming off the debate stage, of her helping him down these two little tiny baby steps. A, a six-year-old could navigate those steps without a problem. Have you seen that video? Oh, my gosh. And I don't know how it got leaked, but there it was. This was a wide shot, kind of blurry. Jill is on one side of him, an aide is on the other, or maybe a a CNN staffer. He's going down these steps like he's climbing down a 20-foot ladder. Look, it's over for him. There's no doubt. It's just a matter now of who they go to, who they pick. 1-800-655-MIKE. Let's get as many calls in here as we can quickly to Stephen in Michigan. Stephen, hello. Hey. Hey. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about, um, or now I forgot my point, but um, about Joe Biden saying, uh, uh, Joe Biden did better than Trump, and he was on it. She's just as delusional as he is. I mean, yeah, but you know, but but again, the the point is not old. They they're going to give their political talking points. As a wife, aren't you worried about putting your husband through what he's going through right now? Look, I despise Joe Biden's policies. I felt a little sorry for him last night, and and frankly, I'm not a guy that believes he's a kindly old man. I think he's pretty vicious. I think he's a nasty, corrupt, horrible president. I felt sorry for him. Um, It's 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 it was bad. It was that bad. Howard in Oklahoma City. Hi, Howard. Hey, Mike. I was wondering, wasn't they going to have to uh, uh, do a Zoom call or something like that to take a roll call before the convention to get him on the Ohio ballot? 
And so if he steps down, doesn't that put the decision after Ohio, after the convention? Well, I mean, you get, now, you, you get into convention rules, Howard, about brokered conventions and what that looks like and how they take a vote. And, of course, there's some people talking about missing filing deadlines. That doesn't have anything to do with it. I mean, what they can do in Chicago at the Democrat convention is is – what they will do they're going to reject joe biden and they're going to nominate somebody else and it's happened before in our in our history it's going to happen again because there's no way they're going to stay with joe biden 800-655 mike brian in washington state how you doing brian oh not not too bad uh hey just uh get to the point uh it was a huge win for trump just because he didn't lose his cool uh, i think that's what uh biden was going for the whole time was trying to provoke him yep but uh if if the Democrats stay with Biden. I think Trump, Trump wins in the fall. But uh, according to last night, you know, what we saw, if they replace him, I don't think this is going to be a victory for us, unfortunately. Well, I, it, dep- it, dep- just- it depends on who it's going to be. You think Kamala Harris could win? Oh, heck no. I mean, I don't think they could put up anybody that can win. But the thing is, is there's a lot of people that just have such a bad distaste for, for Trump. That sure. They'll just go the other way and, and not to say and I, I would do that yeah I, yeah I'm just look trying to look, put myself look. In a p- no position. I get I get it I understand that but you cannot minimize the tremendous momentum that Trump has right now huge huge momentum he's a he's ahead in every poll he's he's made incredible shocking inroads with people of color uh, women men I mean there's young voters are going to vote for him ahead of Biden so, you know, yeah, they could undo that damage with Kamala Harris. Let's just look at that because they're, they're stuck with her, I think. I, I would be a, even if she said she stepped aside on her own volition, nobody's going to believe that. So here's the, the, the progressive movement in America kicking the black lady to the curb. No, they can't do that. So the, the, the one path could be make her the nominee and hope she can win. And she doesn't beat she doesn't beat Donald Trump. Now you're right on a personal level. They could say, "Oh wow, look how rough that looks for for Trump to be beating up on the on the black lady." Look how well. Look, we're ba- we're past optics. Now we're into policy. And incidentally, Trump reinforced border policy, um, the economic policies, foreign policy beautifully last night. Don't forget the great night that Trump had. Can't all be overshadowed by the the horrible night that Biden had. One big question that needs to be asked, of all the mainstream media outlets that have been lying to us over the last two years about Joe's ability, they're now cornered. They knew he was like this, but now they can't hide it anymore. A lot of people are making that point, and it's a good point. However, I I would gently push back, not that I disagree with you, Earl, But let's face it, nobody thought Biden would be this bad. Nobody expected he would be that awful last night. Raspy, mumbling, staring off into space, completely, completely out of it. And so, you know, we're back to how do they replace him? A lot of people are talking about what does that mean? How does that play out? Here is a, a and again, I, I'm, I'm breaking my rule because this is a good day to hear clips from MSNBC and CNN. Might be the only day, um, in addition to November the 6th, we might play a lot of MSNBC and CNN cuts after the election because that's fun to watch them when things don't go their way. But here's where they went through the number. This is what they went through as far as the process, the mechanics of replacing Biden at the Democrat convention in Chicago. You know, you either need to right the ship or do the thing that's not going to happen, which is to replace him on the ticket. I, I mean, I, I don't think that's an option. But the fact that people are talking about it, if it's not an option, only seeks to further weaken the perception, Correct. weaken the standing of, of President well, Biden. The question is whether you're hearing that it is an option, that there well, is some viable legal. means of I mean, it. I, I spoke to a, an election lawyer. It is legal. And the way it happens is Joe Biden releases his delegates ahead of the convention. And you can't do it on the first vote. But I think on the second vote, they can go somewhere else. So it is legal. It is possible. And I think when people say it won't happen, it's because they think Joe Biden would never do it for the reasons Joy already articulated. He's the only person 
who beat Trump. And he believes, and he has some reason to believe this, that he's the only one who can. And to give to, to amplify that, someone actually sent me the rules. <laughs> uh, uh, and so the, the rules this are is, circulating. <laughs> and so people are, and so, and this is, again, this is not us saying that this is going to happen. Wow. No one is saying it's going to happen. It's very unlikely. But just to note that the Republican convention has 110 unbound delegates. The Democratic Party has 771 unbound delegates. Now, that does not mean that those unbound delegates will do anything. It takes, there are 3,000 delegates that happen on the first ballot. It takes 1,951 delegates to win. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, 1,976 delegates to win. It's all a numbers game. I mean, but- all right. Uh, they're, in, they're in a complete meltdown. They really are. And, uh, and it's just a matter of time. Now,